Daniel Tapers group, Don McCullough, who is a narcotic agent. He often flies late at night over Houston. He has uh, been in Miami when I was there for a conference in different places. And uh, he comes and substitutes uh, when Bob is away. He often flies over just to lead the singing. And many of you have been here on Sunday morning, of course, when he has led the singing. Well, today I talked to Don over the telephone and uh, heard a very fascinating story. I read you the newspaper account, but the newspaper account wasn't very accurate in some ways, which is not unusual. Sometimes they get it all straight, sometimes they don't want to, and sometimes they do. But in this case, it wasn't very clear. The uh, first thing I discovered was that Don and his partner, when they went to Columbia, were not permitted to be armed. They were living in a hotel in Cartagena on the 18th floor. They were told if they ever needed help at night that uh, just call the security and they put extra security in the hotel. Seven men pounded on their door one night and they called down to the desk immediately and send, send up security. They could look to the people and see Cubans and Colombians. One of them we called the Mad Cuban. So they called down to the desk and uh, they just fussed around, but no security ever came. Instead, they were taken down, kidnapped, taken down the elevator, 18 floors, marched through the lobby, and the security stood around in the lobby and watched it like a cow looking at a new gate. Then they were put in a car, driven through the city. The uh, mad Cuban, one of them was a Cuban, he pulled out his 45 in the car and just wanted to shoot someone, so he shot his partner in the hip. Just reached over and shoved the 45 in his hip and pulled the trigger. Boom. And uh, Don realized then, of course, that things were quite serious. They took him to out to the edge of town in the forest, and, uh, and Don realized that they were going to kill them. So he made, when they stopped the car at the edge of the forest, he reached down to grab the gun of the man who was next to him, but he got it mixed up with his shirt tail and he couldn't hang on to it, to his 45. So he decided right then and there to do something to make himself a difficult target. So he dove through the door and started running, and he would zigzag as they fired at him. They hit him uh, once, uh, just below the spine, and uh, he kept running to the 45. And then, of course, he stumbled. That was the bad thing. So they caught up with him, and uh, they started shooting at him with a 45. Uh, they got him once in the clavicle, and uh, the bullet bounced around in that area and went out. They shot him once in the neck, and it went all the way down. The 45 went all the way down across his back and came out his armpit. So he shot three times with a 45. By this time, he was bleeding so badly, he just pretended to be dead. So they left him. In the meantime, his partner, uh, they had been uh, shooting him, but the man who was shooting him only had a, a PPK 380. So uh, he shot him a couple of times. He, of course, he had 145 in his hip, but the rest were PPKs and it jammed. So he was sticking the gun right on the guy's face and the thing wouldn't work. It jammed. So then he ran away. In the meantime, Don, they had left Don completely, and what Don did was to crawl and stagger three miles to the edge of town. And there he found a uh, Catholic priest and a policeman. So he asked them before they took him to the hospital to go back and get what was left of his partner. He thought his partner was dead by now. And uh, so they went back, and all seven of the men were still there. And the police officer then uh, told Don to back off. He pushed the mad Cuban away and drew his pistol, and they slowly backed away, and they took Don to the hospital end. Uh, they said the other man was in worse shape than he was, which wasn't true. He was by far in the worst shape. He was shot three times with a 45. Whereas his partner uh, had crawled through the woods and had escaped and was in a different hospital, and he was by far in the worst shape, though no one knew that at the time. Well, the upshot of the whole thing was that uh, uh, Jewel, his wife, was uh, 
stopped at Mexico City and told to wait to see where they were going to take him. They did not take him to Miami. Uh, they cannot take, due to the stupid leak of this whole thing, they cannot take uh, his partner Martinez back to Miami. He can't any longer serve in Miami. They've had to haul him out and they put them under heavy guard and they're protected in some other part of the country. Uh, Don's uh, house is under very strong guard. His children are walked to school with guards. They have a whole security system around them because of uh, the leaking of this thing. And of course, uh, Don knew that he still had something to do for the uh, Lord or he wouldn't be alive today. But he did every possible thing that an arm, uh, unarmed person could do. And uh, he says he feels fine. Uh, they are going to, uh, uh, a surgeon is going to have to look at him shortly, a uh, chest surgeon, but he seems to be doing very well. All he did was to uh, clean out his wounds and sew them all up and all the rest of it. And he says he feels fine and he's doing well. But uh, to me, the big disgrace in all of this is that American agents who must carry weapons were not permitted to do so. They were unarmed all the time they were on their mission in Colombia. Now that is inexcusable. And the fact that they are sending home in disgrace Americans' advisors carrying M-16s, why that is the stupidest thing in the world. No American should ever have to serve in another country and not be armed. And our policy is so pusillanimous, it's almost unbelievable. And somewhere along the way, the American people and the libs and the anti-gun crowd and the morons and the knuckleheads are all going to have to wake up before it's too late. If anything, the, both the civilian population and the military population should be armed to the teeth. That's the only way we're going to stop crime. And all of this liberal nonsense, this Ted Kennedyism, is absolutely imbecilic. Well, we're delighted that Don is back it's, and that he's in good shape. It's certainly an answer to a lot of prayers that have been offered on his behalf. And certainly the Lord has taken him through a very difficult time. That's all I can tell you about. There are other things, but it's uh, uh, of no concern or interest at the moment to you. A great concern, of course, to him. About what's happened to the seven people, if they've been captured or not, I'm not at liberty to say. All right, uh, we are studying the doctrine of evil. It's evil on the part of...